Welcome back to Comic Book News. You know, I don't usually like to do overly negative reviews, but every once in a while, a comic comes out that you just go, man, they missed a real opportunity. Today, uh, as you might tell from the background, we're headed to the future, the future of the DC Universe, with Legion of Superheroes Millennium, part two of two, the lead-in to the all-new Legion of Superheroes series by Brian Michael Bendis and Ryan Sook. Let's talk about it today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back to the future. Today, let's talk about Legion of Superheroes Millennium number two. Now, I know this came out a few weeks ago. My local stores uh, had a little snafu and we didn't manage to get one. So I went back to my old standard hijinks comics in San Jose, who always has a copy uh, for Big Danny. So uh, hijinks has it. Thanks, hijinks. Let's talk about Legion of Superheroes Millennium. You know, last time around, I reviewed part one. I didn't give it a very favorable review, but I said, hey, let's give number two a chance. It could really salvage itself because uh, one thing about this series that I liked is the idea that they were going to take all of the future continuities of DC Comics and tie them together. So Commandy and Tommy Tomorrow and some other ones. And, and this issue continues with one of my favorite future DC uh, guys, OMAC, the One Man Army Corps. Uh, a Jack Kirby spectacular, very uh, often overlooked and underappreciated in my opinion. Um, so, you know, Legion of Superheroes Millennium number one. Wow, what a fun looking cover, right? Well, the first one, we didn't have any appearance of the Legion of Superheroes at all. And in this one, well, I don't want to spoil it when we can look at the real deal right in the million dollar comics cam. So man, this is a fun looking cover. This is kind of what I'm, I, I was hoping to get out of the Legion of Superheroes, okay? Now granted, this is not the Legion of Superheroes series. This is the Legion of Superheroes Millennium two-part series that leads into the, to it. These are $4.99 each, so I paid 10 bucks for this story. And it's really should have been called Rose and Thorn because that's what this entire, both it, uh, uh, issues are all about this character, the Rose and the Thorn, who Bendis has decided is going to be very important in his comics. So in the last issue, we went up uh, in time and we talked. We went through some of those various future scenarios, and and we're continuing. Uh, Rose is immortal, or is it Thorn? I don't know. There's sort of a dual personality. They have superpowers, maybe. None of that is spelled out in this book. There's no real clarity on her powers or how they work or even the relationship between the, the, the two personalities, Rose and Thorn, not really well defined in this book, not to my satisfaction. Anyway, Rose is out and about and she's at the Museum of Superheroes and she's flirting with the museum guy and... Uh, you know, talking about how things have changed so much. The language has changed. Dating has changed. In reality, the language didn't seem to change that much. Just a few words here and there, kind of like future speak. So not pulled off that great not, uh, as far as like the difference in the language, but whatever. Um, museum guys hitting on uh, Rose, but it doesn't work out. Um Another one of these double page Batman ads. I almost mistake these for like comics. Um, but then straight into OMAC. Oh man, this is a great picture. This is probably the best looking picture. Maybe this will be the, the thumbnail shot. How about me reacting to OMAC? Uh, I love OMAC. This looks great. This looks really close to the John Byrne version of OMAC. He did a black and white series in the 90s that you know sort of brought back OMAC was sort of a cult dish type character and um did a, a relook at him that was really great and 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 man i think this is jim chung artwork that's my other peeve with this book is there's a bunch of artists nicola scott jim chung jeff decal ryan sook and unless you know what their style looks like and can tell by just looking at it you don't know who drew what in here i kind of think i know so anyway this stuff is beautiful i mean i think this is jim chung right doing the the OMAC stuff. And it just looks really great. The best looking pages for sure in here. But what happens? Nothing. Just like the other 
uh, interludes in the future. It's great if you want to weave these future things together, but man, have something happen, Bendis. All that has happened in every one of these is like Rose interacts with the character from that future scenario and is just sort of, she's so, she's too cool for school and she's super smart and and uh, whatever, you guys, and then on to the next hundred years in the future, whatever. Nothing really happens. Nothing. It's annoying. Um, Because especially when you have artists of this caliber and a guy like Bendis who, who can write, he writes, he's written plenty of comics that I have loved, and that's why I'm holding his feet to the fire on this, because this is harsh. Uh, and and well-deserved, because, well, let's keep going. So now, Rose decides to go into space. So now she's got her Rose helmet on, and it's not clear how she got there. She's just, like, zooming through space. She doesn't have superpowers like that she could fly that we know of. Maybe she, maybe she does, but not that we can tell. So she decides to go into space. She's just in space. She's just like, I want to be away from Earth. I'm sick of Earth. And then we get to see she's hooked up with some alien races. I honestly am not sure if this is an allusion to another like DC future universe. Really can't tell. Don't know. Not sure. Don't care. Um, you know, where she's getting involved in all kinds of intrigue. And then finally has decided, you know, it's time for me to return from Earth. This is really neat looking stuff. I mean... It's not typical looking comics and that's okay. I just wish there was something more to it, to the dialogue, to the story, anything to engage us other than typical Bendis snippets of nothing. And I and I like those work in the right context, but in this book, there's just no there there here. Whatever. Finally, Rose has decided to return to Earth and and our, where, when is it? We don't know. We don't know years, but we're getting the feeling that she's going back to Earth. She's going to see the new Earth has been like this. You know, it's not just a planet anymore. Obviously, there's been technological changes and whatever. It's future Earth. It's, you know, Jetson's Earth, maybe. Um, is this the world of the Legion of Superheroes? Could it finally be? And, it, and, and this is when my blood started to boil reading this book because I go, man, there's not many pages left here. In fact, there's nothing, you know, there's only a couple pages left. And, okay, Rose is walking into, here's our futuristic city. I guess this is Legion of Superheroes Super Future City, which is supposed to look like nothing we've seen before, but it looks like everything that we've seen before of pretty much any future city, especially recently. There's nothing too special here, although the artist is pleasant to look at. Like this, it, it's well drawn. And finally we get, a two-page spread of the Legion of Superheroes, our new flagship thingamajig, uh, and that's it. This was called Legion of Superheroes Millennium, and this is the only appearance of Legion of Superheroes. We get no characterization. We learn nothing about them. They're taking a picture, and there's a little bit of dialogue blurbs here, and we're supposed to be excited now that coming in November, the Legion of Superheroes, Bendis and Sook, Man, they, I don't know what they were trying to do with this series. But if they were trying to like hook me and build up some goodwill that this is going to be a fun to read story that's going to be like engaging and, and interesting. Because honestly, those character designs look cool. They look fun. They look like everything that this book was not. I'm being really harsh Maybe it was the fact that I didn't get this book on time and I'm late reviewing it. Maybe it's the fact that my power is about to go out uh, here in my hometown. Uh, but I, this book really made me mad. Um, Bendis, I I love you. I actually am really enjoying action comics quite a bit. But almost everything else you're writing, including Superman, Event Leviathan, um, Naomi, this so far... And I'm not even reading all your Wonder Twins and other stuff that you've been working on. But man, almost none of it is clicking with readers or with me personally. Action comics I'm enjoying because you're infusing your street level uh, 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 essence. You know, your that's your specialty is writing the street level crime. And bringing that to, Goth, uh, to uh, Metropolis and how it interacts with Superman is really interesting. It's a great book. I recommend people read action comics i think because i'm enjoying it 
I can't recommend anything else. And I'm going to read and review Legion of Superheroes number one. And now you have set the bar so high. I mean, it had better be fantastic. Or you're going to really turn off a lot of people, man. So, speaking of turning off people, that's what we don't want to do around here. And what we have been doing is attracting more viewers. If you made it this far, then you're a diehard. Not many people watch the, are, 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 not as many people are watching our DC videos as our uh, Marvel videos and especially our X Men videos. But those who really care about comics, the true fans who love writers and artists of comics, not just characters and companies, that's a distinction I draw among. The viewers of this show, I think. You're not as interested, per se, in Spider-Man, but you are interested in a great writer who might take on Spider-Man. So that's why I love you guys and why I'm loving the comments down below. If you've got stuff to say, if you got complaints about Bendis, um, or if you want to sing his praise, let's hear it in the comments. Tell me what you got to say. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And uh, you know what? Thanks for talking about comics with me. See you next time.